pretty torn. I don't have a decision on this one as far as what's vi more visually appealing. What do you guys think? Hi guys, Gidru64 here, and today we're talking about the physical media releases for the month of July in the year 2022. That's right, almost a full year of physical media uh, monthly release videos here on the channel. Uh, I really enjoy doing these. They may not do the best uh, numbers wise, uh, so definitely let me know if you guys want me to continue doing them. Hit that like button. Uh, that's really what uh, propels me into continuing talking about the uh, physical media releases each month. Um, and with this video, what I wanted to do is something a little bit different, and I'm just going to talk about uh, kind of just uh, all the movies in general. Generally, I put them in categories. I'll do uh, new releases, older releases, steel books, and then uh, special releases. But with this one, what I wanted to do was just kind of talk about the movies more free flow. Um, they're kind of uh, they're not really in any kind of category, but I'm going to talk about the movies, all the different versions of those movies. Uh, at the same time and uh, go through and go through that way. So um, definitely let me know if you guys prefer this format or the older fo format because what you guys are interested in is really going to dictate how I'm going to do the physical media monthly releases going forward. If you prefer this way, um, let me know. If you prefer the old way, let me know, please, in the comments below. I definitely appreciate your feedback. But with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. First up is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, or as I've seen some people write it out online as Doctor Strange Mom, using the acronym MOM. Please, please don't call it that anymore. <laughs> I don't just say multiverse of madness or Dr. Strange too. Let's just not use the acronym mom anymore. I don't like it. I did not go and see uh, multiverse of madness in theaters. Uh, I was a fan of the uh, first Dr. Strange movie. I thought it was a really good origin story and I really liked the character of Dr. Strange. I've actually got the animated uh, movie that came out, you know, what, in 2010, I think it came out. Um, and uh, I, I was like, I always wanted to see Doctor Strange live action movie. And I thought that this movie did a pretty good job of, of capturing that. Uh, with this uh, Multiverse of Madness, I was spoiled on a couple aspects. And the spoilers that I heard really made me disinterested in seeing it. And um, I have since watched it. And it's okay. It's, it's average. Um, I'm, I think if you're judging it against the other things that have come out this uh, this phase of the MCU, it's it's better than average. Um, but uh, I just this phase of the MCU, I'm, I have not been a fan of. I, th I think that it's completely lackluster. I feel like there's they're all over the place. Uh, the, I feel like the shows have vastly underperformed and been very underwhelming. And um, you know, and this is kind of a, a sequel to WandaVision. Um, and, uh, it just, there's a lot of things going on in the movie and I, I just, I don't know. It was okay. It just, I, I'm not, I'm probably not going to buy it. I, I don't think so. I don't really see me going back to rewatch it anytime soon. Uh, but, uh, Multiverse Men is coming out. I do think that the cover looks pretty sweet on the basic uh, cover. There are some exclusives coming out. So, uh, Target has an art edition exclusive, which I think looks pretty cool. I'm not really a big fan of the composition necessarily, <laughs> uh, but I do think it's cool that Target is has an exclusive design uh, with uh, some mini prints on it. And then Walmart also has an exclusive as well. I actually think the Walmart one looks a little bit better than the, uh, the Target one. Um, maybe, I don't know, I'm kind of torn. Uh, on it. I actually think the basic one looks better. Believe it or not, I think the basic release looks better than either of the other ones. We've also got the Steelbook coming out as well, which it looks okay. It's not bad, uh, but uh, I don't know. I still think that the design for the basic, you know, a Doctor Strange is, is better than this, though. <laughs> Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which is also another multiverse story. I have not seen this one yet. Uh, I've seen some pretty solid uh, reviews for it. And, you know, I think it's interesting that both of these are being released on physical media at the same time, both these multiverse stories. Uh, I'm afraid that the multiverse, um, you know, storytelling element is being overused in films at this point. Uh, I think Spider-Man No Way Home nailed it. And the, it, the, what makes the multiverse story interesting uh, is not inherently the multiverse. It is how it's utilized and the characters uh, keeping the, the keeping a character focus that's really what made spider-man no way home so solid like those character moments with the spider-man 
you know that's what made that so good it wasn't just the fact that it was a multiverse but uh i'm sorry i'm kind of segueing away from everything everywhere all at once i've not seen it yet uh i've seen some pretty good reviews though i may be picking it up based on those reviews but i'm, I'm always hesitant to 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 buy something just based on reviews um so uh, I would definitely be curious to see what you guys think about that movie. What's interesting is that Everything Everywhere All at Once also has a Walmart exclusive. I was kind of surprised by this. I'm kind of surprised by the Walmart and Target exclusives that we're getting, but I'm all in for them. Any, even regardless of what I think, I think about the designs, I am happy that we're getting multiple designs of physical media releases because it does bode well for physical media releases the fact that they're putting in the effort to make exclusives uh i think is a good thing for physical media so and uh, i do think that the the design is very interesting i will say that i think it's a very interesting design <laughs> the lost city is coming out on 4k uh with sandra bullock and channing tatum and uh, this is uh, on Paramount Plus. If you guys have Paramount Plus, it's been on Paramount Plus for a little while. Uh, I still have Paramount Plus. I got it for 1883 as well as The Offer, which The Offer is a very underrated TV show. It's one of my favorite TV shows of the year so far. Uh, I kind of want to do a video on it. Uh, so Paramount Plus has produced some pretty good things. Uh, I'm about to get rid of it. I don't think I don't see anything else coming down the pipeline right now. Uh, Star Trek's not holding it for me. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, when I saw the trailer for The Lost City, I actually thought of like uh, the Romancing the Stone and Jewel of the Nile, which are two you know pretty fun movies. Uh, that's kind of what I had the feeling of when I was watching the trailer. Uh, so it seems like it'd be a pretty fun movie. Um, and it's got some pretty good reviews, but I haven't got around to seeing it yet. Downton Abbey, a new era, 4k it's coming out. That's really all I have to say about it. <laughs> Memory, a movie with Liam Neeson. Uh, it's another action movie with Liam Neeson. Uh, you know, and I never even heard of this thing until I was making this list. So I didn't even know it came out. Um, it seems like a generic Liam Neeson action movie, uh, but it I found out it was directed by Martin Campbell, which I was kind of surprised by. Now, Martin Campbell directed two of my top five Bond movies, one of those being Casino Royale and the other one being Goldeneye. And um, so I was like, oh, well, maybe it's OK. The reviews have been middling, to, to, to say the least, so, but I haven't talked to anybody out there who's actually seen it. So if you guys have seen Memory, uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. There's a documentary coming out called Alaskan Nets, and uh, this apparently was released last year, but it's getting its physical me media release now. At least that's based on what I had seen. And this it's a basketball documentary uh, about uh, a small town in Alaska. And uh, it just, I, watching the uh, trailer for the documentary definitely got me interested in it. I have been to Alaska. I've been to some of these small towns in Alaska. They're very interesting places to visit. And uh, I haven't been to this specific small town in Alaska, but it doesn't matter. I, I like these types of stories. It's got uh, documentaries, which I like sports movies. Uh, it's uh, Chris Pratt's involved. He's an executive producer, so that's pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. I'm gonna actually put a link to the trailer for this down below if you guys are interested in checking it out uh, I think I might probably pick this one up I I'm really interested in seeing it and we're getting another DC Universe animated movie and uh, these things you know I've collected a lot of them I've talked about them before I've probably got like 30 of them or so I don't own every single one but I own probably about 80 85 percent of them and uh, really they've gone downhill over the last couple of years um, I think the storytelling's gone off the uh, off a cliff uh, I think the animations kind of gotten a little bit cheaper and, uh, you know, I, this is the Green Lantern story you guys should get, right? Th this one this one came out in, what, 2011, I think. Uh, I actually bought this when I worked at Blockbuster, guys. It's got the Blockbuster emblem on there. I don't know if you guys can see it. There you go. Blockbuster emblem right there. Green Lantern First Flight. This is a solid Green Lantern movie. This is what the live action Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie should have been. And this was in the heyday of the DC uh, animated universe movies. And I would highly recommend this one. Now, they also had uh, Emerald Knights, which was a collection of short stories, which was pretty good. And the most recent Green Lantern story that we got was, well, I mean, I would say it's a Green Lantern story because that's the main focus is uh, Justice League Fatal Five, which this one was okay. This was more directly tied into the uh, Bruce Timm animated universe. And, uh, but, 
I do like John Stewart. John Stewart's my second favorite Green Lantern. Uh, I really like him. I liked him in the DC uh, animated universe. Uh, the Bruce Timms uh, animated, you know, Justice League um, series was great. And uh, I, I'm a fan of him. Uh, I feel like that's the uh, the direction they should go with the live action Green Lantern. I think John Stewart would. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to them skipping over Hal Jordan or having Hal Jordan elsewhere and dealing with uh, John Stewart in a live action setting. I've seen the trailer for this. I think the animation looks not very good. It just looks pretty cheap. Um, and uh, they also, I noticed just on the cover, they changed the Sinestro emblem. Um, that's not the Sinestro core emblem. Regardless, I, I just, I, I don't know about this. The DC animated universe movies just have not really been top notch in my opinion. Green Lantern is also getting a still book release. It's been pretty consistent with Best Buy with these uh, DC uh, universe animated movies. They are releasing still books. I've never actually, I don't think I've ever actually seen one in stores before, but uh, you can get them through the website if you're interested in pre-ordering it and you want the steel book. There is a steel book option for this, but as I said, watching the trailer, I just, it didn't sell me on it. I think I'm kind of burnt out on the animated, uh, DC animated movies because I feel like they're kind of low effort at this point. And, and that's kind of sad for me to say, especially as someone who owns like 30 plus of them. But uh, this might be good. I have no idea. I was collecting a lot of comics back in the day. Green Lantern was one of the ones I got consistently. I was very interested in the... Uh, the, uh, the the spectrum whenever that was introduced the, the the blackest night and then the brightest day story both of those so um, I, I really think Green Lantern is the most underutilized um, aspect that uh, th they should be sinking a lot of effort into doing a Green Lantern live action movie properly in the vein of like a Star Wars uh, it has the potential to be that but uh, again, I, I don't I don't know if this one's going to be any good. Edge of Tomorrow is getting a 4K release. Uh, so Edge of Tomorrow came out really before the 4K format really took off. So I'm pretty sure this is the first uh, 4K release we've gotten of Edge of Tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure. I'm about 95% sure. <laughs> so, uh, and Edge of Tomorrow is a great movie. Great science fiction movie. Seen it multiple times. Also stars uh, Emily Blunt. Uh, I will say that kind of loses steam a little bit in its third act, but still... Really solid movie. Now I own it on Blu-ray and they really kept not, they couldn't decide what to call this thing. They kept changing the title. So on the slip, it says live, die, repeat. Uh, and then it says edge of tomorrow right down here in the corner. So they couldn't figure out what they were going to call it. And <laughs> this is obviously evident of that, but it's a great movie. Uh, Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, great science fiction. Definitely recommend it. It's also getting a steel book, which is pretty cool, but I don't really know which one I prefer. I don't know if I prefer the, the art for the steel book or for the, um, for the basic 4K slip. Huh. I'm pretty torn. I don't have a decision on this one as far as what's more visually appealing. What do you guys think? Do you guys think the Steelbook looks better or the 4K slip? And we're getting the second Indiana Jones movie, Steelbook, on 4K this month. That's right, Temple of Doom. I went in and picked up Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've talked about this one multiple times. I'm glad that they're doing the individual 4K releases of these movies because this is far superior to the white uh, graphic design that they used before. I know I've mentioned it on multiple videos at this point and did its own, I did a own video, uh, a d dedicated video talking about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, Temple of Doom is coming out. I've already got this one on, on pre-order. So at this point, it's just a uh, hoping that it doesn't get dented in the mail. Uh, but uh, the design again, looks cool. They're just going to the classic poster design. Looks awesome. Can't wait to get all three of these. I don't, I still don't think they've announced Crystal Skull yet, but I'm looking forward to getting Temple of Doom. Uh, next up is Men in Black. It's getting a 4K Steelbook release. Now, I own the trilogy already. <laughs> and uh, I actually, I think Men in Black 3 is is not that bad. I, I know a lot of people don't really like it. It's not as good as the first two, but I don't think it's that bad. Now, the, new, the fourth Men in Black one that, yeah, we're, we won't talk about that one. But regardless, uh, because I already own the trilogy, I don't know if I'm going to pick this one up. It is going for like $27.99 really high priced for an older movie i do think the design is awesome if i pick this up it's just because the steelbook looks uh, amazing uh but at the price point i just i don't know if i can justify it to myself uh if i didn't already own men in black uh then i would definitely be picking it up because i think this it's great I, i'm curious as to how the 4k uh, upgrade looks. I know it looks pretty good on Blu-ray, so at least I didn't really have any issues with the way it looked. So, uh, but Men in Black is is a solid. It's one of my favorite. <laughs> 
one of my favorite Will Smith movies. And uh, again, uh, good comedy sci-fi. Good Burger is getting a steelbook release. This released on Blu-ray, I don't know, a, a few months back. I remember it was in my run of uh, release videos. So uh, I'm glad that Good Burger is getting a steelbook release because I didn't actually pick up the Blu-ray. I, I had planned to and then some time went by and I kind of forgot about it until the steelbook came out. So uh, I'm actually picking up this Steelbook. I'm very much looking forward to getting a good burger on Steelbook. I think the design looks really good. I think it'll look good up on the wall. And um, the only thing that I really hope that they do, because the Nickelodeon movies have been putting out some of their live action movies on Blu-ray, I really hope that they put a Snow Day movie. Please give me the Snow Day Blu-ray upgrade. I, I would love it. That would be a pre-order for me. Give me the Snow Day Blu-ray. Matter of fact, give me a Snow Day Blu-ray um steelbook yes please do that next up is a movie called okja uh i'm pretty sure that's how you say that i've been to korea a couple times um just not very good at speaking it uh but <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's what it is this is getting a 4k criterion collection release i've never actually seen this uh but i have gotten more into uh korean films and stuff like that more recently so i think that i might be checking this out um yeah, have you guys seen it? Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Um, because, you know, it, it's it's been out a few years. I, I, I think the reviews have been pretty good for it. Uh, but again, I haven't, haven't actually got around to seeing it. Uh, Raging Bull is getting a 4K release, uh, Criterion Collection release on 4K, which is cool. I've actually never seen Raging Bull, but, uh, you know, I've always wanted to. Uh, I'm a big fan of Siskel and Ebert, and uh, Siskel and Ebert both named Raging Bull the best movie of the 1980s. A whole decade, Raging Bull is the best movie of the entire decade. Uh, it is done by Martin Scorsese, who's one of the best directors of all time. I, I love his movies, but I have never actually seen Raging Bull. I think the black and white kind of turned me off to, to watching it. Uh, but um, I, I'm, I, I really actually want to see it. I actually kind of want to go back and see it. My favorite film of the last 14 years since Roger and I began doing this show, was Raging Bull. Obviously, it is also my favorite film of this decade. First film on my list for 1980s is exactly the same film, Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull, and there was no question in my mind. I think that's kind of amazing that we would be in agreement on that. Siskel and Ebert can't be wrong, right? Probably not. <laughs> Down to Earth uh, is getting a Blu-ray release. And uh, I think this might be the first time it's come out on Blu-ray. This is a Chris Rock movie. Uh, the one thing that I think is very strange is this is getting a Blu-ray release and it's $20. It's a pretty high price for an older movie getting a Blu-ray release. Now, I have done that, but I have paid that much before. When Twins came out on Blu-ray, it was released for $20 for a basic Blu-ray set. Um, so I don't know if this is the same company or not. I probably could have looked it up beforehand, but uh, yeah, Down to Earth is getting a Blu-ray release. Again, $20 seems kind of high to me. Uh, Species is getting a 4K release. Um, don't have much to say about it other than Species getting a 4K release. Um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is getting a 4K release as well. Uh, never actually seen this one. A lot of people, you know, talk about it. Never really gotten around to see it. Uh, I Unfortunately, I got the ending spoiled a long time ago, and that's probably part of the reason why I haven't gone back to rewatch it. And I feel like I've also seen some breakdowns or something inadvertently about this movie. So I, I, don't, I haven't gotten around to seeing it, uh, but it is getting a 4K release. Uh, Devil in the Blue Dress is getting a 4K Criterion Collection release, so there's lots of Criterion Collection releases on 4K coming out this month. Uh, Six Million Dollar Man is getting a complete series Blu-ray release from Shout Factory, uh, so just every, everybody run in slow-mo to uh, Best Buy to pick that one up. <laughs> Honestly, I was more into Bionic Woman than I was Six Million Dollar Man. Uh, I mean, they're, they're both basically the same thing, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just like the Bionic Woman more. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2 uh, is coming out on Blu-ray, and uh, everybody knows I'm a big Star Trek fan. I've done plenty of Star Trek <laughs> videos on the channel. Uh, if you've been around, you, you know, that's the case. I mean, I've got the Enterprise and Voyager back there. Um, yeah, I, I've seen a few episodes of Lower Decks. I don't think it's a bad show, but I don't really consider it Star Trek. It, I mean, it's just, it's a comedy. I mean, it, it's it's Rick and Morty. It's, it's not really Star Trek. I mean, the only thing of Star Trek about it is kind of some of the jokes, the aliens and, you know, stuff like that. But, like, it's just, it... 
it's not bad, but I don't really consider it a Star Trek show. But regardless, um, the se season two is coming out Blu-ray because season three is just around the corner. Uh, Sequest is coming out, the complete series on Blu-ray. And I actually remember watching this a lot whenever I was a kid. Uh, I don't remember much about it. I just remember watching it a lot, if that makes any sense. It was like in that weird time when you're like eight, eight or nine, you know, and you're just like, uh, you kind of brain dump that as you get older, like some of the some of the stuff you were into, unless you kept watching it. Uh, that was kind of the case with Sequest, but uh, I would be interested in going back to revisit it. Uh, I just like the premise of it. I thought it, I thought it was cool. Um, and 4400 is getting a complete series release on Blu-ray. Um, I thought this one was already out, but I guess not. This is the original 4400. They tried to do a reboot more recently with 4400 and no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't believe they did a reboot of this. Uh, they should just continued on with the story that was put forth in 4400 because they never actually finished the story. For those who are fans of the series, they never finished the story. It was pretty aggravating. Uh, I will say that the, the you know, the first season of 4400 was really solid. Uh, and then it just kind of each season after that kind of went downhill in my book. But uh, I had a really cool premise. And that is all that I have for today. As always, these are just, this is my list. These are some things that I, I picked out. I'm not gonna be able to cover every single movie. Uh, some movies I might have missed that were coming out. So if there's something I missed that you guys are interested in, definitely comment below and let me know about that. Uh, and please let me know what you guys think about this new format where I just kind of free flow and talk about the uh, releases instead of putting them into categories and just, and what you guys think about the chapter markers for each uh, each title that I'm talking about. I think it might be a little bit better, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm very much mixed on it. So your, your input is extremely valuable to me. So please comment and let me know. And also please let me know what you guys are picking up. I'm always interested to see what uh, what you guys plan on picking up if there's, or what you guys are the most interested in. And uh, yeah, I, there's some pretty cool things coming out this month. Not the biggest month, uh, but some pretty cool things uh some things have already got in pre-order so uh i just want to thank everybody for checking out this video uh thank you subscribers you guys are awesome and if you like this video please like comment share subscribe to all the youtube stuff or don't i'm not a beggar i'm g264 and i always tell you the truth